Hey guys. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> oh, we thought we'd better pop the uh, seal and, and bring ourselves back out again. Because uh, we've been busy doing life. We've been busy doing life. <laughs> um, and we kind of thought that it was a perfect topic to come back out with is um, how do you assist uh, people with, uh, how do you assist society? How do you do better in society? How do you contribute to society? Whichever way you want to spin the conversation. Um, and we thought in current times that would be the way to do it. Um, hey Kate, hey guys jumping on, say hello when you jump on. I guess, yeah, and, and the question, it's, it's a question that leads into how do you, all of us I feel, for me, I shouldn't say all of us, I would love to inspire the world around me and, and make a difference in the, in the world, not just in the world, but in your life and in the kids' lives and the people that we know, I'd love to make a difference in their life and then help assist to improve those around us. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. And I think um, sometimes we can get caught up in um, being busy and whatnot. And, and we all have our best interests at heart. And it's really funny how you notice like time vanish, right? You notice that things just, you know, it's, you've got every intention of doing more or being more, but suddenly we get busy in the busy in the doing. And we miss the point of fulfilling those parts of ourselves that, lead to more creation, that lead to more inspiration and more contribution. Um, so it, I think it's coming back to that part of ourselves that needs to be loved and nurtured. I totally just did a post about this, which has probably led a little bit more of the inspiration. Hey, Sarah. Um, hey, sweets. Oh, very well, thank you. Very well. So um, I felt tonight with this piece of conversation, it would be a really great love to hear from you guys what your thoughts are at the same time. Yeah. Um, but how do we contribute and assist to society? We've both found um, like a massive thank you for everyone, every one of you who is participating in life. And I know, look, Facebook is not participating in life. I fully get you. We do try to watch as many of you as we possibly can and, and, and share and contribute in every way in which we can. Um, but so many of you have reached out in the last couple of weeks. And I know there's a lot of chaos going on. And I know Clint and I agitate a lot of people in many ways um, because we aren't quiet we will always be loud peacemakers not quiet there's there's quite a few things with that we i, I know i trigger a lot of people um because i was never meant to fit in with the social norm i never did i was never comfortable with it um, i was never comfortable in watching the world turn to shit i was never comfortable in just blindly accepting anything and it doesn't matter what it is, what it is there um, we're not going to get down the roads of any sort of politics tonight, well, not intentionally. No. Um, but for me, even the whole way I, I was went through my schooling years, I struggled to understand and to see things when they went, this is what we need to do. And I'd be, what's the reason for it? I need to see the whole picture to understand it. What I'm getting at in that, for me, I know I agitate a lot of people because of the way I learn and the way I do things. And there's quite a lot of things that... Agitation is a form of learning for a lot of other people. It's a stepping stone the way I do things, definitely. I'm not everyone's person. Maybe I'm not meant to be. Mm. That being said, at the same time, the way I do things in the world might lead other people to make different choices. Maybe it's to maybe open up their mind a little bit into the way that things are done. Or inspire. Or yeah. inspire it to be something totally different. Or curiosity, even. Um, and mild agitation can quite often lead people down a road of frustrated uh, exploration into finding the information and becoming a little more aware or a little more alert. And if that's all that we actually do in the world, I would, I would probably die happy, to be honest, because that is what I thought was my contribution, is to be that slightly bit absurd, to be that little bit different. And Clint and I were discussing the other day about our school years and both of us through school, through hospital like through our jobs, through everything that we did, we were always questioning everything. Like people would say, do this. Why? Because I told you so. Nah, not a good enough reason. Um, do it this way. Well why? Show me that tell me what the end product is meant to be so I can reverse engineer it and understand the complexity of this and why you want it done. Just because now, both of us have recognised there are a lot of people around us that in parenting, because we live such, oh, in parenting in life, we live such full-on lives, or many of you do, um, live such full-on lives that are so full, that are so over-crammed, everyone is spread, spread quite thin. 
and this is not a, a jab, but it's an awareness, is that a lot of people will, um, when children, for instance, would turn around and go, but why? They won't give an answer or they'll give a, a brush off of an answer, which is not doing justification to your children. It's not doing justification to yourself because mm. it's also not admitting when you don't know. And that I think is the most marvelous because children are the most wonderful beings because they are so pure, so innocent, so aware and awake. Our children are the ones that potentially see the world truly for what it is. And it is society, I feel, my belief, my, my perspective, mm. is society knocks it out of them. It's... And so, it's, it's interesting what you say there with the way that kids learn and the way the consistent asking that they do and why is this, why is that? And a lot of us get frustrated because we don't know the answers. Look, for me, as, as a parent, there's a lot of stuff there that I would like. I, I, I don't bullshit to my kids. If they ask a question, even if it's not exactly the most polite way of doing it or there's... Um, it's tabooness. Not, it's a bit of tabooness. I just tell them how it is. Mm. I'm, and I'm being real with them because I don't, I don't want them to get into this world and thinking it's some sort of a fairy tale. And unfortunately, the way I see it, it's just not. Mm -hmm. In most cases, you can and you can change the mindset of the way you do things. But if we're real, for me, if I'm real with my kids, at least I'm being honest. Now, my point with that is when they come and ask questions, if I don't know the answer, what I feel I should do more often is let's go and find the answer. Not, I don't know. They're not even brushed off as it just is. Let's find the answer because some of those questions that you don't know the answers to, they're the ones that can kill you. Mm -hmm. They're the ones, a serious question left unanswered is something that can really play on your heart. The other thing is, is most of the questions that are asked are actual bullshit questions. They're for amusement's sake. They're ego. They're for ego. They're to, to make yourself right or to find some way of making yourself more important. And find an agreement that agrees with you and a lot of questions that are asked, uh, whatever it happens to be, what's your take on this? And what we're really, what I've done in the past is asking and looking for that spot, um, what was it, that echo chamber of people around me that agree with me so that it makes my ego a little bit stronger. Now this, I know we're getting a little bit off topic, but the point with that is, why don't we go and ask questions that, to people that you know are going to challenge you differently that that are going to see things totally different to you with an open mind and then that way you can see whether your thoughts this bundle of thoughts that you call a belief and somehow you feel like is true is not true maybe that that's this is a, a point again getting off topic when we start looking at some of these things go and go and look into the most challenging stuff i, I was brought up in a religious home and i just finished uh, reading a book called Christianity, the Ultimate Poison. Um, and to be honest, there was a lot of really good logic in there. Mm. I know that's going to trigger a lot of people. Nevertheless, a lot of really, really good lo good logic and a lot of good information in there that made me look at things in a totally different manner. My point with that is, look at things that you wouldn't normally look at. Stop looking within your echo chamber to fulfill, to see, to, to go from there. What so many of us are doing in the world, particularly at the moment, I see is there's a lot of people that are in fear mm. and they're looking to the other people in fear to get reassurance that they're scared of the right thing. Mm. Is that helpful for the whole of society? No. No, it's not. And when I look at the best way to inspire society or to build a better society, there's a few things. First of all, one of them is a society grows great when old men plant trees for their shade they'll never sleep under and what that essentially means is if you can do things with absolutely no need of a thank you or you do a good thing even when no one's watching you you do something and it doesn't matter what it is but there's no there's no uh, reward in it it's just doing good things mm -hmm. that's how a society grows and that's how people get, get inspired if you can afford to pay for someone's groceries or whatever it happens to be, but you don't post on Facebook about it, I think that actually makes it kind of a little bit more impressive. Mm. Um, and again, in that inspiration thing is just doing you and doing us. And this is what we were talking about earlier. We have a very different life to most, um, but we, we actually, choose it. We cho I was going to say exactly that. We choose it. We choose a life which is outside of the norm because... The norm didn't feel so good. And I don't know whether many of you would have gone through life to this point feeling like you didn't quite fit. 
like maybe you're a little obscure, maybe you're a little different. But what I've seen sadly so often is that people take those parts, and which I don't want people to have parts. We are a, we are a one being, but there are aspects, fragments that have been pulled apart and made wrong or made different or made uh, catastrophic to society's expectation of the norm of who is successful and who is good enough and who is shiny enough to be in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. In saying that, like so many of us have allowed that to happen. And I think the greatest gift is for us to come back into our our pure essence. And we found that through play, through questions. We have the most deepest conversations so often where we will have opposing thoughts and opposing opinions. And we'll yeah. marvel. And then in you this... just come to learn that I'm right. So, it's <laughs> so we just marvel in the factor of seeing the two perspectives. But I definitely feel like that's why we haven't been on here for quite some time. We've just been doing life. We do post through our stories a lot. Yes, I know. We do post controversial things. We post agitation posts. We post things that make you question or make you make you question us, make you question society, make you question sanity. Or it doesn't. Or, or it doesn't. doesn't. Or and you brush it away and you just... And this is, a, this is a, a point as well. If there's things that you see that, uh, yeah, I don't agree with that, it's not about agreeing or not. It's about questioning. And, and this is something for me that it doesn't matter whether whether you agree with me or not. I, I To be honest, I couldn't give a shit whether people agree with what I think or not. There's a lot of stuff that we, we have been putting up that's a little bit controversial to, to the societal norm. Um, and a lot of that is just to challenge people to actually start thinking. And I don't care which way people think. I really, really don't care in, in any way. But I do care if they don't think because that's not how a society grows great. Mm. You have a look around it, and unfortunately, the way I see it, maybe I'm wrong, prove me wrong, I'd love to know. Something we've learned from day one, from the beginning of our society, right through our schooling years, is that repeating information is rewarded, that following and obeying instructions is the right thing to do when you get further in life, um, that, that success is measured by finances. And all of, all of these little things, then that, that it might not seem massive, but one of the big ones is this, obey is the right thing to do. Mm. Look, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's just not. That's not how a society grows great. There is a time, and, and I'm not saying in any way that you need to be, um, that Bad. we need to have anarchy. What, I, what I'm suggesting is that if something doesn't seem right to you, it doesn't matter what it is, don't just do it. Mm. Now, I, I literally told my kids this on the weekend. Question everything. Question me. If I tell you to do something and it doesn't seem right and it doesn't seem safe and you don't feel right within yourself, ask more questions. Do your own damn research. Everyone has access to information these days. And in the age of information like we have, now just on a side note, don't use Google. Just go and <laughs> just go and use DuckDuckGo or something that's not um, censored to, to get your information from. In an age of information, arrogance is your choice. If you choose to say, "I don't," oh, no, I know I don't have that," or "I haven't looked at this," or whatever it happens to be, that's your fault. If you end up in this spot, be so, take some responsibilities for it. And I'm we've been getting very f frustrated. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should let it go. And I've, this has been a thing for me for a while that is that people don't take responsibility for themselves. And again, if we did, if I, I, I try my best to own every part of the bullshit that I do, um, and there's a lot of it. I fucked up pretty good when we were out at Lightning Ridge, had a little uh, little accident out there. And I'm wearing pants to cover it. <laughs> but I literally took all the responsibility in the world for that. Um, mm. Completely unsafe and stupid. However, the best thing that I could do was apologise and own every part of it. Um, and, and we hope we hope a lot of the time when we speak and do our things, we hope that we're wrong. Hmm. We hope that the worst we do in the world is apologise. Hmm. Because what it comes down to in the day-to-day -day decisions of how we are being in this experience is we are being fully in this experience. We are marvelling in the simple justice that is our being the justice of what the life was we were given on this earth and that was to play to create 
to expand and to explore. And anything that goes against those values, and freedom is one of the top ones there, mm -hmm. anything that goes against that is what we question. Anything that goes against that is what we rebel against. And it's not rebelling against it as if we're joining mm -hmm. the masses. It's not a revolution. No, the rebelling is simply being within yourself, knowing what you do and don't stand for, and standing strong within that. There is where you are contributing to confide, to society. If you are doing anything less than that, you are not just doing society wrong, you are doing yourself, your spirit, your soul. You are, you are here to create so much more, and so many of us have been suppressed and repressed. Do you guys actually look and realise... Back in the old days, and I saw this, I saw this meme about it. And again, I know I share some crappy little memes, but they 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 give they give me that smirk and that irony of where society is currently at. And quite often, that is at this blinded faith without question, this suppression of our soul and our uniqueness, this conquering divide of society, rather than coming together and going, "You're a massive, amazing human." You're an amazing human. I don't quite agree with you, but what are our main values? To mm. live fully expressed, to live free, to live humble, to live in a way that is us lighting up our lives and lighting up the streets with our, our happiness and our joy. But what is currently happening is all of that is being suppressed. And that's the part that really saddens and, and puts a burden of emotion in, in most of us is the fact that our soul feels so much suppression right now and it's coming out disease how many diseases did we know back in the day there was a couple how many are out now children and i'm not saying adults how many diseases and issues and illnesses are our children currently burdened with mm -hmm. that says something there is everything is wrong and off kilter right now in our world it's because we haven't questioned it and I, and I feel like this is a big part. There's a few questions that I feel like everyone should ask themselves. First of all, as we've talked about, how do you inspire and how do you make this world better? One of them is, and as I say, by not, by not just blindly following. The other one that I would encourage everyone to do is write down on a piece of paper your top 10 values. It doesn't matter what they are, just write them down and go, all right, it's love, it's compassion, it's kindness, it's freedom, it's truth, it's this, 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 whatever it is. And then list them one to ten of what matters the most to you. And then you'll understand a little bit about why you do the things you do. Now, what a lot of people, and maybe I'm wrong, I know a lot of I know a lot of people that will have safety as a high value. Now, what you'll see is when people have safety is a really, really high value, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, it's usually below freedom. Sorry, it's usually above freedom for a lot of people. And that's why we just blindly let crap happen to us. We blindly let the governments take control of what they're doing because we want to feel safe. We blindly let partnerships, family members, yeah. schools, religions. We let so, if you really look at this, how much of society is built to suppress that part of ourselves? How In much takes and saps away our pure essence and our light? Do, do you think... Part of the way we do things, and even it's just as simple as safety, like, um, say with children, a lot of us don't push the limits. It's not that we want to, that we feel unsafe of our children, but you don't want your kids to not like you. Do you feel like, do you feel like a lot of parents don't set strong boundaries for their children because they don't feel safe that if they don't do all of these things and be better than their parents, whether their kids are not going to love them the same way. I see this a lot. <laughs> I and, don't have children of my own, but I have been able to witness many situations, be in many situations. And what I have found is, yes, sadly, in both married, unmarried, relationships, family situations, there is always someone who feels they need to compensate for some part of them. And I think what I do see a lot, and I think, I feel, I should say, I feel what I, <laughs> what I do see a lot, and I feel it, is a lot of people go into the world and do all of the things because what they want is to create this future, not now, this future perspective, opportunity, for their family, for their loved ones, and they spend all of their time and energy being over there, 
creating the thing for the future that could potentially possibly work out or not. And then they get to a point somewhere along it where they realize there's this empty space that they've missed so much mm -hmm. important content that then they try and find ways to make up for the fact that what they were doing was they were not present for the minute, minuscule moments in between, which really matter, which is you being present and being in these people's lives. Do you, which is do you, where, which yeah. is, hold on, which is where, <laughs> I'm on a roll, um, which is where I feel a lot of people, families, relationships, and I'm going to say families and relationships because it's not just the children here, it's also the partner, the partnership. Quite often, we get busy in the world of creating the vision of freedom, of success, of, of, of a financial future, that we miss the fact that the one thing everybody else wants from us is your presence, your presence, your presence. There is no use having money in the bank if the ones you love, having the, the car, the jacuzzi, the boat, the clothing, the dolls, if you, your energy, your essence, your presence and your truth is not there with the person. Yeah, I, I can 100% agree. And I've made the mistake that in my past by focusing so hard on the future that the way I felt working towards getting it was very fucking average. And that definitely defines and, and is telling of how you're going to feel when you get there. I wasted a lot of time just in the search of being financially successful and as we've said in the past, somehow it's easier to cry in a sports car than it, than it is on a push bike. Um, but, but nevertheless, I told myself this lie that I was doing it for the kids and it was for the future of everything. When, to be honest, the kids don't give a shit. Mm. All they actually want is you to be there with them and do it fully. Whatever you're doing, do it fully. Um, and, and that's where the magic that I see in life is. We're talking about, and this whole topic today was how do you inspire and how do you do, how do you contribute, contribute to do whatever you do and do it full, fully. But <laughs> <laughs> the other question that I would have for everyone is who are you? Who are you deep down intrinsically? I, I want to know, to, to put that in the comments. Who are you intrinsically? Who do you think you actually are? Because the answer is a whole lot freaking harder than you think. So, so my question to anyone that goes into this search would be really to understand and look for it because we all think we know and I thought I knew. I, I thought I knew and I defined myself by all of these things and I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to spoil it for you because that, that, per, that learning of who you really are loses its value if I tell you. Mm. I can allude to the fact but it's not really true for you until you find it for yourself. It's not the stuff. It's not the things. It's not, it's the, not the expectations. It's not trying to prove mummy and daddy to be right or wrong. It's not trying to make other people happy. It truly comes down to who you are and what truly lights you on fire. Yeah. And and again, I think the we've talked about this a little bit. What Whatever, if you want to be happy in life, doesn't matter what it is. People say you can't buy happiness. You can. You can buy it, but it's very, very temporary. Mm. You can, you can go and buy the sports car and you feel amazing today and it wears off very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. whatever, whatever you've got, the things that, whatever, if you're putting all your soul focus on this one thing, and it's the same as if you put your soul focus of happiness, doesn't matter what it is, in your partner and you go, oh, I'm going to meet this beautiful world girl and she's going to cook all the things and make me feel amazing, be amazing in bed, all of these things, whatever it happens to be. What that feels like to part to your partner is burden. Mm. It doesn't feel like, you know, a partnership, a partnership or anything like that. It feels like burden. codependency. And it doesn't matter even if your partner does do all of those things. It's still short lived because you're going to have a great big freaking hole in your heart because you've gone looking for the end. You've searched for the means to the end. Now, anything you do in your life doesn't matter what it is. And I'll speak from my experience. If you do anything as a means to an end, when I did things as a means to an end, it was absolutely mind-numbing, painful, slow death. You do anything as a means to an end is, I'm just going to do this so that I can get through the day. Mm -hmm. Once, oh, all right, I'm just going to grip my teeth and bear it. It's a slow, mind-numbing death. Mm. And you don't need to have it. Um, we'll wrap up. But um, I feel like a good piece to finish on is to remember 
I see so many people going, yeah, but I have to. And that breaks my heart. The choice is always yours. The choice is always yours. And many of you are going to go red in the face right now and want to punch me through the screen. But the choice is yours. Yeah. You can get another job. You mm -hmm. can find another way. You can have another option. You can downsize, stop spending, don't be so greedy. Yeah. Stop suppressing your emotions and paying for things that you don't freaking need. Start being real with yourself and actively reflect upon who are you, how are you showing up in the world, why are you not fulfilled? And are you actually really, really loving the life you're creating? Because if you're not, you've chosen it, so change it. And at the end of the day, if you're not working on yourself daily, you're going backwards, you're regressing because progress doesn't get the stit sat static. So if you're not inspiring and you're not inspiring or helping the people around you, you're actually taking away from them. You've got to find that balance in there somewhere. We come back to this a fair bit of balance and energy and all of these things. Find a way, look into yourself a little bit. It doesn't take that much to sit on the couch and just breathe for two minutes. Just sit there and go, you know what? I actually need this. I need this for me. It doesn't matter what it is. You need these times. We all, the whole collective universe right now needs higher vibrations mm. because I can tell you what what's out there is low vibrational shitty energy at the moment. We we went out for a nice ride today and it was great mm. seeing a lot of people out there um, sticking it to the, you know, the, the stay at home rule. Um, but never, nevertheless, I don't even know what that's a thing anymore. No, but, no, no. But, um, but the main thing is, is do the things that shift your vibration. Be yeah. outside, be in the air, be, na be natural, be with the, the part of your being that is, is meant to express, which is breath, which is sight, which is feeling, which all is hearing, senses. which is all of that. Don't, yeah. don't repress and suppress. And if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling stagnant, if you're feeling like everything is helpless or you've got too much on your plate, stuff it. Drop it all. And get outside, go do something different to raise your vibration. And that is the key. What is my moment's choice right now to raise my vibration? Is this book, is this house, is this partner, is this energy, is this choice, is this job? Is this giving me a greater vibration or is this detracting from my vibration? Yeah. That can be the, the, the narrative that you can utilize to start navigating your days, your life, your moments better. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers most of the things. So what I would say with all of that is the best way to inspire, create, and um, change the world around you is be you, do you, but do it in the best way possible. Don't be the shittiest version of you. We've, we've all been there. We don't need to do that. We don't need to hold that shitty version of you. Hey, Troy. Go out there with a bang. Go out there with a smile on your face. Show up. Question things. And enjoy yourself just that little bit more. And make that choice to be happy. And if you enjoy yourself, here's a great question. How can I enjoy this even more? Obviously with little chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. Love right. you guys. Up for another Peace one. Out. Peace out.